Some breaking news for you this Wednesday. Let me get the date and everything right. Uh, Wednesday, the 24th of April, 2024. Rudy Giuliani, Mark Meadows, Jenna Ellis, Christina Bobajob and Boris Epstein have all been indicted in Arizona. You work for Trump and look how it ends up. The best people. You have all been indicted. <laughs> Can't wait to hear. I think Jenna Ellis will be having something to say about this one. As an attorney who is also a Christian, I take my responsibilities as a lawyer very seriously, and I endeavor to be a person of sound moral and ethical character in all of my dealings. In the wake of the 2020 presidential election, I believed that challenging the results on behalf of President Trump should be pursued in a just and legal way. I endeavored to represent my client to the best of my ability. I relied on others, including lawyers with many more years of experience than I, to provide me with true and reliable information, especially since my role involved speaking to the media and to legislators in various states. What I did not do, but should have done, Your Honor, was to make sure that the facts the other lawyers alleged to be true were in fact true. In the frenetic pace of attempting to raise challenges to the election in several states, including Georgia, I failed to do my due diligence. I believe in and I value election integrity. If I knew then what I know now, I would have declined to represent Donald Trump in these post-election challenges. I look back on this whole experience with deep remorse. For those failures of mine, Your Honor, I have taken responsibility already before the Colorado Bar who censured me, and I now take responsibility before this court and apologize to the people of Georgia. Thank you. Inside Donald Trump's prison cell, the surroundings are like any other small enclosed space. The walls are gray concrete, and a narrow cot with a thin mattress is the only piece of furniture. A tiny metal sink and toilet combo sit in one corner, while a small barred window allows a sliver of natural light to filter in. The sound of clanking bars echoes through the air as guards patrol the hallway outside. What? What? What is... President Trump is 76 years old. He will die in federal prison. Trump spends his days pacing the limited floor space. The once powerful man now finds himself in a place of confinement. One of the questions that does spring to mind immediately when you look at Arizona is why hasn't former guy Domper, uh, Domper, uh, Diaper Don Pordioni been uh, indicted as well? I suspect, it's only my suspicion, is uh, they're going to see who will flip. Will Giuliani flip? Will Meadows flip? Will uh, Jenna Ellis flip? Somebody perhaps is going to think, why should I take the blame for uh, the guy at the top? Love to know your thoughts on what's going on in Arizona today with these new indictments. Comment section, please. Um, look, I'm just going through the number of pages here. 58 pages. You've been able to go through this here literally as this is breaking. What else can you tell us about who is being charged and with what? Yeah, Aaron, like you said, look, the 11 fake electors from Arizona, um, the Trump fake electors, they were all indicted. That includes Kelly Ward, who was the former head of the Republican Party here in Arizona, um, along with her husband, Michael Ward. Um, but more importantly, these names that are redacted, we're learning more about who those people are. They include, as you mentioned, Rudy Giuliani, the former personal attorney of Donald Trump. It includes former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, and it includes Boris Epstein, who is still a very close advisor to yes. Donald Trump. And in fact, sources have told us and people close to Trump have told us that the reason Boris Epstein hasn't been seen with Trump in New York uh, for the start of his criminal trial there is because of concerns of this looming indictment. So that coming into fruition today. And so the, the, some of these defendants and some of these that you're naming, Boris, obviously, uh, Rudy Giuliani, Mark Meadows, their names are redacted in the version that we have now because I understand they're still actually in the process of serving them. So when I say this is breaking, it's breaking to that level. Um, is there anything else you can tell us about some of these uh, redacted names, which, by the way, are, are written, some of them in the context of unindicted co-conspirator number one was unwilling to accept that he lost the election, right? That unindicted, unindicted co-conspirator number one obviously then uh, is Donald J. Trump. Right, absolutely. And, and look, these are all individuals from the Trump world, from the Trump universe. The three we've identified so far are obviously very close to Trump or were very close to Trump at a certain time, especially when he was trying to overturn the 2020 election. And we'll learn more about these other redacted names um, 
probably about in the next few minutes here, but we are told that they're all from that inner circle, from those people that were working um, in Trump's orbit to help him overturn the 2020 election. And look, this investigation here in Arizona, it's obviously coming years after those efforts were first exposed. Um, but we always thought that it was really focused on the fake electors themselves. Myself and Marshall Cohen have reported, though, in the last few months that the probe did seem to be expanding and did seem to be looking into people who were connected to the Trump campaign on a national level. And now we know that some of these names in this indictment are in that really that inner circle of Trump's orbit. So we'll bring you more when we have it. But for now, we do know that some of these really close advisors to Donald Trump are included in this indictment. Zach, thank you very much. All right. So as you get more and you go through this, please, we're going to bring you back into this conversation because, as, as I said, this is a 58 a page document. We're, we're having a chance here to go through it as, as we speak. So Zach will continue with that. Ryan that Goodman. What strikes me, though, is who isn't here. Uh, and that's obviously the former president of the United States, yeah. who's not a defendant here. And that leaves many people scratching their heads as to why not. I'll venture one guess. On Thursday, that's tomorrow, the United States Supreme Court is going to hear Trump's presidential immunity argument. He has made presidential immunity arguments not only in the federal election interference case, but also in the Georgia case, also in the Florida case. One reason that Chris Mays may not have indicted Donald Trump here is because she wants to see how that plays itself out first and also give some of those indicted a chance to flip against. And I don't think Christina Bobachov realizes that when you say something on tape, somebody somewhere like me finds it when it's relevant. Evidence that Joe Biden cited cheated. So they could withdraw their electors or they could actually decide to award Trump electors, although I would anticipate they would probably just withdraw the electors. And if that happens from three different states, three different resolutions go into Congress. And I'm sorry, I'm summarizing this. Right. It's, a, it's a complicated issue, but uh, it would have to go into the U.S. Congress to decide whether they want to accept the resolutions, whether they want to act on them or not. So it's a complex uh, issue that needs to be handled complexly by different state legislatures and the U.S. Congress. And I actually think that it's, a, it's designed well because you don't want this to be something that you can quickly, easily Correct. overturn elections. It needs to be something that you need many, many elected officials to take action on. You have to have the majority of, uh, in this situation, the majority of three different legislatures say, oh, you know what, we got it wrong, then Congress. So it's a complex issue. I, I, I don't know that this Congress would take action on it. However, after 22, if well. we replace them, there might be. Who knows? Like you said, it's never been done before. Right. But that's why this primary coming up in November is so the midterms rather is so important. Yeah. It's important that we get it right. And we uh, try to call out. All I want to see arrests. I want to see perp walks. I want to see people in jail for stealing this election. I don't think he's going to get convicted. I don't even know that this indictment is going to survive, quite frankly. It completely disregards the law. So I'm not even considering that at this point as something that we need to be concerned about. Donald Trump's going to win the presidential election. He's going to be the next president of the United States unless Joe Biden gets impeached and there has to be someone between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Donald Trump is going to be the president of the United States again. I'm not worried at all about jail time or any potential criminal convictions, none of it. it. This is all, quite honestly, and Jim, you and I have been talking about this for years now. This is election interference. That's what this yeah. is. They're trying to influence the election. Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. We've got some breaking news tonight out of the state of Arizona, where Attorney General Chris Mays just announced a grand jury in Arizona has returned indictments in the investigation into the fake elector scheme in that state to steal the 2020 election. You'll remember that was the plot devised by allies of Donald Trump to send false certificates to the National Archives claiming that Donald Trump won the state's electoral vote rather than Joe Biden. This played out in seven battleground states with the intent to sow chaos and confusion at the certification of the electoral votes, which was to take place on January 6th. Arizona Attorney General Mays has been investigating the scheme since shortly after she took office last year. We're here because justice demands an answer to the efforts that the defendants and other unindicted co-conspirators allegedly took to undermine the will of Arizona's voters during the 2020 presidential election. Whatever their reasoning was, the plot to violate the law must be answered for, and I was elected to uphold the law of this state. 
Now, 18 people are listed in the indictment, which we've just been going through here, but only 11 defendants are unredacted. Those include former Arizona Republican Party chair and uh, erstwhile Senate candidate Kelly Ward, as well as her husband, Michael Ward, as well as current Republican state lawmakers, Jake Hoffman and Anthony Kern. All 11 that are named in the indictment and unredacted served as those false electors, the people that signed and certified the bogus document sent to the National Archives. Now, there are seven additional defendants who have not yet been served and their names are redacted. The Washington Post reports they are former Trump White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, attorneys Rudy Giuliani, Jenna Ellis, John Eastman and Christina Bob, top campaign advisor Boris Epstein, and former campaign aide Mike Roman. The defendants are charged with conspiracy, fraud, and forgery, which are all felonies, for, and I quote here, scheming to prevent the lawful transfer of the presidency to keep unindicted co-conspirator one in office against the will of Arizona's voters. Unindicted co-conspirator one is, of course, Donald Trump. 